Hello, today we're going to be talking about curve fitting and I, I enjoy this section because it ties a lot of concepts together and it takes those graphs that you used to sketch in Algebra 2 and in pre-calc and we finally can sketch more accurate graphs and it's just a great way to use calculus. Now I started off this first part just a little review. So this is the graph of a first derivative here. So remember, label your graph so you know what you're looking at. And it wants us to answer some questions on the interval from negative 3 to 9. All right, so on what interval or intervals is the function decreasing? So that's when immediately in your brain you need to think, when is the derivative negative? When you come over here and you can see all these slopes are negative, all these values, remember the values represent the slopes of the tangent lines on the original function. All these values are negative, so that's when the original function is decreasing. Now, in what interval or intervals is the function of f concave up? So again, immediately in your brain, you need to think, when is the derivative increasing? And that's just something you have to know. You have to know all those relationships. So that's where I'm getting the 2 to 9. At what x value or values does f have a relative extrema? So that's where you're, remember, you need to think critical numbers. Where does the derivative equal 0? And does it change signs? So come over here, where does the derivative cross your x-axis? And you can see it goes from positive to negative, meaning your function goes from increasing to decreasing at negative 2. And then here it goes from negative to positive. So decreasing to increasing, you have a relative min at whatever value that is, 7. Okay. And then lastly, at what <clears throat> x values does the graph of your function have a point of inflection. So that's where your derivative changes direction if it's defined. So in this case, it goes from decreasing to increasing. So we're going to say roughly around 2. So you need to be very comfortable with these relationships. And doing this section will help you with these as well. All right, so curve sketching is going to be where we're going to take this function and we're going to try to accurately graph it the best we can. So everything starts off the same as what you did back in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc. You're going to find the intercepts, you're going to find the asymptotes, that's all the same. You started off the exact same way and I plot all this as I go. Um, so consider the domain and range. So immediately you recognize, uh oh, we have an issue at negative 4 and positive 4. And always try to reduce. You might have a hole or you might have an asymptote. In this case it's two vertical asymptotes. Then get your intercepts, so that's what's going on. Plug 0 in and then set it equal to 0. Set the numerator equal to 0 to get your, um, your x and y intercepts. Ah, symmetry is one of those where I realize after I've graphed it. I, if you find this helpful, go for it. I don't really find it particularly helpful when I'm doing these graphs, but if you do, go for it. Asymptotes, <clears throat> get your both horizontally and vertical. So vertical comes from the denominator after you've reduced, because it could be a whole. So you want to reduce your rational function, then set the denominator equal to zero. So that's where we're getting our vertical asymptotes. And then if the degrees are the same, it's the leading coefficient. So that's where I'm getting one half. So I went over here and sketched the asymptotes. All right, then from there, you're going to use calculus to help you finish. So I'm going to scroll up here. So First, you need to get your critical numbers. Set the first derivative equal to 0. And you get 0 from the numerator plus or minus 4 from the denominator. You're going to throw out what's not defined on the original function. But you're still going to keep it because you could change increasing and decreasing at the, at the vertical asymptotes. So notice we still got plus or minus 4 from the denominator. I crossed it off because we know it can't be a relative max or min but we could still change increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So you're going to set up your first derivative number line. I put increasing, decreasing. This is where we're checking where is our function increasing and decreasing. Then set the double derivative equal to zero to get your potential inflection points. All right. Now you don't get anything from the numerator. From the denominator, you get that plus or minus four. We know those can't be inflection points, but they're still worth putting on our number line because we could change concavity, all right? So notice I put undefined above my asymptotes here. So I'm not tempted to say, hey, that's an inflection point because I changed concavity, because no, that's not true. All right, now, once you're all ready and set up, check your intervals in the first derivative 
to see what's going on if it's increasing or decreasing, just like the first derivative test. And then check your intervals for concavity in the second derivative to check concavity. So you can see we're increasing, increasing, but we go from increasing to decreasing at zero, and zero is defined. That's a relative max. That's what I put right here. And I made sure to plot that. Now we had already plotted it because it was one of our intercepts, but. <clears throat> So that's the only relative extrema. And then we don't have, we, we do change concavity, but since these are not defined on the original function, we don't have any inflection points. All right, but I think we're ready. So notice underneath I wrote increasing, increasing, decreasing, decreasing. See how that lines up with the number line? And then above I made arrows. So arrow up, arrow down within this interval, and arrow up. And that just kind of helps you. And then from there you sketch. <clears throat> that's it. So make sure you get your intercepts on that graph, asymptotes, any relative extrema, and any inflection points. You have to accurately plot those, okay? All right, now here's a polynomial. All right, so we started off the same way. You get your intercepts first, so plug zero in, set it equal to zero to get your x and y intercepts. So I plotted that over here. Can't really see the lines, but that's at x equals three. All right, no asymptotes, so that's kind of nice because it's a polynomial. All right, and then we're ready to jump in. So you need to figure out what's going on. What, where are the um, relative extrema that you're going to get from the first derivative? Where are my inflection points that you're going to get from the second derivative? So get your critical numbers. Find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and we get two critical numbers at three and at one. All right, so I created my first derivative number line where I'm going to test to see where it's increasing, decreasing, and I put my critical numbers on there. Now, while I'm at it, I do it all at the same time. Then I set the second derivative equal to zero, and you get a potential inflection point at two. So I made my concavity number line that I'm going to use with the second derivative and put two on there. All right, now come back, test these intervals. So plug the zero in to your first derivative. You can easily see you'll get a positive. Plug something like two in. Plug four in. That's where I'm getting these signs from. So I immediately see I go from positive to negative, my, meaning my function goes from increasing to decreasing. I have a relative max at one. And I have a relative min at three. All right. And then here, when I test my intervals <clears throat> in the second derivative, sure enough, negative to positive, I change concavity. Now, inflection points don't have special names, so you're just going to plug two. I should have mentioned this. The one, three, and two, make sure you plug those into the original function to give me the ordered pairs. All right. So plug two. We've confirmed that we do change concavity, so we're going to plug two into the original function. That's where I'm getting that value from. Okay, so I think we're ready. Get these point, points plotted. So I plotted all those points. Then if you need to, right underneath, positive, negative, positive. So increasing, decreasing, increasing. And then I go from start from concave down and I finish concave up. So you could do little arrows up there if you want. But then it just becomes a connect the dot type thing. Now remember with this inflection point, don't do anything funky. Just let it naturally happen. So start concave down, you're increasing, and then as you go to decreasing, just let that and keep it a nice smooth inflection point. Let it naturally happen. And the nice thing is you always have a graphing calculator sitting on your desk, so you can always check your answer on your graphing calculator. But just don't forget to plot the important points, the intercepts, relative max and mins, and the inflection points. You're not used to plotting the inflection points. And back in Algebra 2, you never knew how high to go for that relative max, but now you do, so you need to make sure you plot that. <clears throat> All right, now this last one is a graphing calculator practice. We'll do this one in class, of course, but this is something perfect for you to do on your own at home is graph this function. And I put a window here to help you set your window. Remember, these are the X um, range and this is your Y range, but then you can go through and it's everything in here is located in the menu button, right? And then I also reminded you how to graph the derivative. Shift minus gives you that DDX so this will graph the derivative for you so you can easily see 
If you want an inflection point, if you graph the derivative, you can then use the max and min feature because where your derivative changes direction, you have a potential inflection point. Okay, so play around with your calculator, see if you can get these same values, and we'll definitely go over some problems in class. Okay, please do your homework. This is a great section. If you're still a little bit confused on things we've done throughout chapter four, this is the perfect section for it to tie it all together. Okay, all right, let me know if you have any questions.